right, it's uh, 6.05. Welcome back into the show. Good to have you with us. Superstation 101 WYDU Live Local FM Radio. Time for our business segment. Brought to you on Thursdays by our partners at First Partners Bank. Uh, we really appreciate First Partners sponsoring this. We're able to highlight folks in business. I mean, you're going to hear... We've got so many entrepreneurial types that listen to us, so many people that either want to be in business or they're in business, always looking for a way to do it better. And, and some of the best experience you can get rather than these so-called experts all the time, it's, it's some of your people that are also in business. And we try to find some variety. Tonight, we got got um, uh, orthodontist. <laughs> How's that? Can we talk about teeth for 30 minutes? Dr. Uh, David Sarmer. Am I well, pronouncing it, you correct? If we're talking about the business of teeth, you know. The business of teeth rather than... <laughs> People calling up with their gum problems. Well, you don't something. want you don't want to get me going on teeth. I'll be here at <laughs> midnight. So, but you you are uh, quite the expert. Let me just give a little of your background to the audience. You've been doing this what thirty years? Yeah. And uh, well written and published and accomplished in your own right. Uh, you've been on major national television shows talking about that stuff. What did you do on NBC Today Show? Well, it was actually I was featured uh, on that segment by a medical correspondent who uh, discovered me in a way. Okay. One of my textbooks. So, so you wrote some stuff and they discovered the... Well, uh, one of the chapters was devoted to how our faces age. Yeah. And how important it is for your orthodontist to make good decisions, you know, that affect how your child looks the rest of their life. Well, that's a really hot topic for the Today Show. Uh, Aesthetics. Uh, yeah. And sure. also, you know, uh, aging and that sort of thing. I mean, it's, you're looking at a target audience of the 8 to 10 crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's mostly female and mostly have children. And so, uh, that's kind of what was the hot topic they wanted. And, uh, then it sprang into the other, uh, you know, to ABC and then Fox. So you did the view. Yep. How'd you stand that? Uh, again, I didn't I had have to, to do that one. Right. I, I begged out of the today show because I said, nobody will understand me. Right, right, right. For one thing. You know, yeah. Yeah. And so then the same thing with The View, you know, I just said, I'm, I'm not going to get up there and uh, Gomer comes to New York. <laughs> so, uh, and then Fox made me sit there and do it. But uh, it, it, you know, I, I tried to stay clear of it as much as I could. That's outstanding. Yeah. Well, look, um, you've been in business. How do you stay? I know you got to, if you devote yourself to a discipline like this, you better love it. But uh, 30 years is a long time. What do you learn in 30 years about running that kind of practice? Uh, every day is a different day, yeah. uh, and uh, I think that the, the thing about my particular business is that it's people, and there are a number of people each day, and everybody has different personalities and different demands and different needs, and so it's really that's really the challenge for us is not so much knowing what to do, but how to convince, uh, for example, patients who won't wear their Invisalign. Uh, he's talking about me, AJ. I was, I was, <laughs> I was ratting myself out because, you know, those plastic, I called them my vampire teeth, yeah. Dr. Sarver. And they're the plastic snap-on braces because I got the crookedest teeth in the mm -hmm. world. I just didn't have the personal discipline. I, was, I would get up at 2 in the morning. If you got braces, you don't have any choice. You got to right, yeah, on this, right? They're on there. Yeah. Oh, I'd just snap those things off and go right back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't really work out that well for me. I had no uh, had no personal. Well, see, there's the business side of it. As long as you're still paying for it, I'm not going to beat you up too well, bad. And, and the thing is, my orthodontist <laughs> told me, he goes, I really think you should do the normal. I was like, no, yeah. no, I don't want to do that. I need, I'm, I'm too, it was vanity. Vanity got yeah. the best of me, which is where those come from, I guess, right? Uh, People yeah. that want clear. Yeah. It would be nice if they could do everything that yeah. braces do. Right, but they don't really. Well, of course not. I mean, you know, uh, if if they did, we'd use them on everybody. Yeah, I know. How has technology really changed over the years and 30 years of seeing it? It used to be pretty, used to be just all wires, but then you all got all kind of tricks that you can do. Well, you know, the major change that I don't think most people realize is the shift from, you know, in my generation, you had big metal bands around your teeth. Yeah. Uh, and that changed about the time I was in my uh, residency programs where we just glue them on the teeth. And so that saves all this space and it's a lot more cleanable and, and that sort of thing. So that's probably a major technological change. Most of the technology today uh, goes towards, uh, you know, things like, remember they took molds of your teeth to make your sure. models and all that. Yeah. Well, uh, it's entirely, uh, you know, we haven't done that in six years because we use a laser scanner. So that it, it makes a three-dimensional model. For a computer. Yeah. And then it tells you how to apply whatever you're going to do? Uh, well, you know, actually what you do is you can send it to uh, a provider, 
uh, of appliances or Invisalign or something and design where you want the teeth to go. Mm -hmm. And then they'll manufacture that for you. I've actually been involved in uh, a project for about 15 years now going down that road, but it's with braces, not an Invisalign kind of thing. Uh, and so uh, that, that I think is the biggest change coming is really the customization of treatment to each individual. So that, uh, you know, it used to be that everybody got sort of the same approach. Uh, and now we're able to say, well, you know, he has a different kind of smile or his facial structure or so forth. We're able to customize the treatment more than we ever have uh, before. Are you seeing more? I'm, I'm noticing more adults that are having things corrected and fixed. Well, I, I don't. Maybe it's just me paying attention. But it seemed as if it was always, you know, you put these on your kids and yeah. the, the kids are part of the big part of the practice. But I guess there's some. Well, other... you know, the history of dentistry, if you think back, uh, at least my parents' generation, is you, uh, uh, you know, got cavities and you got your teeth filled and then they got big and you had to have crowns. And then you got gum disease and then you lost all your teeth and you ended up in dentures. And nobody wants to do that anymore. Yeah. You don't have to. Okay, and so it's looked at more not as an aesthetic issue always. A lot of people do it, of course, for aesthetic issues. Sure. But also just the health of their teeth, that if I can't keep my teeth clean, then I'm going to get mm -hmm. gum disease, and therefore I'm going to lose my teeth and end up with my teeth in a uh, jar next to the bed. You know, it's not, <laughs> not you appetizing. Can a lot faster now, can't you? Yeah, turn Bethany up over here, AJ. Go ahead. Bethany Meadows is with us as well, too. She helps us out with this stuff. I was going to say, I was in braces for five years. I don't, I think five you can years? do it. Yeah. I think you can do them a lot faster now. I had the big headgear and. Well, there are a lot of things that have changed that can uh, be done faster, but if cooperation is poor, Bethany, then. Oh, it's, yeah. Oh. He's blaming it on you. <laughs> it's all you, Bethany. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, I bet you see some cases, though, don't you? I right. mean, some. There's spaces and the buck teeth, some kids that could eat fruit through a tennis racket. I mean, all that stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's such a wide range of what we treat. You know, I mean, we yeah. have some people that will beat you to death for the slightest little nuance. Sure. Some and, little and imperfection. Then, yeah. And some kids that come in that are, you know, truly deformed. I mean, you, yeah. you would notice that uh, one of the books I've co authored was uh, on dentofacial deformities. So that's the people who've got to have, you know, extensive jaw surgeries to. Uh, reposition things, and so those are the most severe that we'll see. Uh, is it? I bet it's pretty rewarding to that, of, of all the things in your practice is to really change somebody's life that way. That's oh yeah, kind of I mean, serious deformity. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of a segment on TED.com mm -hmm. of Simon Sinek, where he. Oh, you really got to go. Okay, see. I got. I'm writing this down. Okay. Yeah, it's really good, and and really what he does is he talks about, uh, simply put, uh, why do you get out of bed in the morning? Yeah. And why should anybody care? Okay. And so that's really kind of hit me right in the chest that why do I get out of bed in the morning? It's because I, I, you know, really enjoy the uh, seeing a patient start from here and end up there and be happy and, you know, great day. They get their braces off and that sort of thing. Beth and I were talking a little bit earlier about what does that have to do with, I mean, what, what's the business part of that? Yeah. Okay. And you noted the uh, longevity of my employees. I mean, it's the 30 years uh, down, you know. You must be a nice guy. They're going to hang out with you that long. Uh, well, you know, the problem is I can't fire them because they won't <laughs> leave. And so, okay. Actually, All right, he, that's he what told me that he treats his employees like he would want his wife to be treated. That's nice. That's a, that's a great philosophy. Well, yeah. that was a lesson I learned uh, when I first started out. My wife worked for IBM for 23 years. Yeah. And so I was just out of school, which get no business training at all. And so as orthodox, we, you know, we mostly have female employees. And so I asked my wife, she was getting offers on jobs from other companies that were worth a lot more money. And most men would jump all over that and she wouldn't even budge. And I asked her, you know, why is that? I mean, you know, it's triple the money. Sure. And she said, no, I mean, IBM, which of course enjoyed a great reputation at the time and still does. She said, it's like my family, all my friends are there and I've got great benefits and my pay is good and it's just like home. It's and, not always about money. Right. And then it occurred to me that, that really, you know, uh, and I don't know if anybody in the audience considered it sexist, but women are looking for security. Sure. Just like for their children and predictability and that sort of thing. And so I went, okay, uh, I'm going to provide good benefits and good pay and uh, then ultimately think about whenever I'm dealing with an employee, would I want my wife to be, uh, handled that way? 
Uh, now, I'm sure I have employees listening right now that are uh, taking notes. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to answer on this one tomorrow. Is it, is it a challenge? Uh, this may be an unfair question. Is it a challenge uh, dealing with all, like an all female staff like that? Because the needs are different. You're going to have off time occasionally if you got kids, and but you got to make accommodations. I well, guess. you know, These some people, people are very rigid about how they handle their schedules. I've always taken the tack that that let's say in a 30 year period, a, a, a female will go through uh, their not married and they're, you know, maybe out too late one night and, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. And then you got the, uh, the, the ones that are raising teenagers. And so I give them more latitude sure. in terms of like, I've got one lady right now who's allowed to come in at quarter after because she can't get her children. Got to get them to school. Them, yeah. Got to get them to school. And so, you know, you give them that. Uh, and then, uh, when they get into the, their kids are out of school, then they go back into the little more need you here. Uh, right on time. I think, you know, you have to be flexible with people. Uh, you, they don't, well, some may try and take advantage of you, but those are the ones that have to go away. But by and large, uh, you know, it's the same thing. You just understand that everybody has times of their life that they need, have different needs. And uh, it, it has been my experience that the, the men tend not to bend very well on their jobs. They right. expect their wives to do it. Expect the wife to pick up the whole slack, pick right. up the kids, and work the job. Right. Now, having right. said that, uh, you know, one of the best times I ever had raising my children was I drove carpool. That's a lot of fun. I, I loved it. Yeah. Gave you a little break to sit out there with the Well, I'd sit there with the moms, yeah. But, with their tennis outfits. And, yeah. But the other thing I would do is, like, if you're coming up to a stop sign, instead right. of just stopping, I would pump the brakes and watch their little heads. And the oh, yeah, okay. Just bobble, I call it bobbleheads. I used yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. I did yeah. bobblehead yeah, kind yeah. of stuff, yeah. you know. That's and fun. So, yeah. I fun ventured the Twilight Zone over yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess the, the, what we could learn, uh, people that are in business or, you know, responsible for employees, is th those personal touches and keeping a healthy work environment and having flexibility. Uh, I would say creates loyalty back, and then and then it, it's there's a return on that, even though it yeah. may be inconvenient, you know, to have to have that kind of flexibility. Well, uh, you know, it's uh, to me, uh, uh, it, it really goes back to your Sunday school stuff that you know the golden rule. I mean, uh, treat people uh, honestly and as you would expect to be treated yourself. Sure. Uh, for starters, and then yeah, you know, everything kind of flows from there. And as as you have experience. And all that you learn their idiosyncrasies and uh you know who's you know like for example my business manager her idea of a great day is to have uh, her door not open and no one talk to her all day <laughs> are they all listening right now i'm, I'm betting like, they are yeah, so, yeah, but yeah. they've heard this before all yeah. right so she likes to go in there and focus oh she she loves for her desk to be clean at the end of the day yeah get it done right so that's who you are as a business manager and then sure. i've got you know, the ladies that are very social and that sort of thing, well, they go to the front yeah, because you know, they're interfacing with parents and patients all day and they've got to be able to juggle phones and people and and all that sort of thing. And then, you know, chair side assistants have to be able to have a particular set of talents, you know, but all of it has to be, uh, as I say, you hire hearts, not hands, that they have to really like, you know, and so that's why I was talking to Bethany again earlier that I think that, that the employees I have, I've been blessed with because uh, it's not a job to them. You know, it's what they do. And that comes through as a patient. I've only seen it from the patient side. When people look happy when you go into a doctor yeah. or dentist office and they're treating you well because they're not stressed yeah. out and, and you're going to get the kind of courteous service because you're nervous when you go, you're tired, you've got things going on in your life too. And it's it can be relaxing as a patient to to be in that environment. They have a very fun office over they? there. They spontaneously break into song and dance. In the middle of your routine? <laughs> I, oh, I play I've rock and roll it. all day. There, there you yeah. go. All right. I, I got to find I got to find out where you are. Yeah. I, well, I've, uh, you know, uh, it sort of entertains me, yeah. but uh, I've also found that it maintains a pace. Sure. Like we don't play slow music in the office. Oh, you get more braces on with rock and roll than you do Elton John? Oh, you betcha. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, okay. you know, and All the moms right. like it, too. They, they like to come back there and I'll play game like shows. Like a musical, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one of the things is about uh, somebody who's been in business for a long time. Yeah. There's this tendency to go status quo. You know, there's this sure. tendency to, to kind of get in your routine, whatever. That's something Dr. Sarver has really been the opposite of. Um, he's His, you know, primary uh, patients are the younger set, the preteens, teenager 
world, and he stayed very current and very, you know, trendy w and in touch with his target audience. And does I, that involve Justin Bieber tickets? I understand. It, it does. Does, what it does. What happened there? Well, uh, that was, uh, you know, you, you're, you're trying to, like, to relate to him. Yeah. And so if, you know, we've got a Facebook page, just like most businesses do. Uh, but what we do is, is try and sponsor, you know, if you have a contest, sure. you want to have it something that appeals to them. I mean, uh, one time ABC 3340 sent a TV crew over with a Justin Bieber uh -oh. toothbrush, you know, uh -oh. that had just come out and wanted my opinion on it. And so when they started the cameras, I was just being kind of funny. And they said, well, what do you think of the Justin Bieber what do you think about Justin Bieber? And I said, who's Justin Bieber? Just, you know, I knew who he was. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the idea is like a Justin Bieber contest is uh, what's the use of it? Well, the use of it is to acknowledge and reward the kids who are coming to your practice for uh, you don't just, you know, let the contest open to anybody. They've got to earn points, and which means brush your teeth, have good grades. There you go. And all those things. So you're trying to model their behavior. Uh, to be favorable and to the parents and then get rewarded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the little girls are gonna love that. Yeah, well, they get a lot better grades than the guys. Do. Yeah, they don't. I don't. Know. Yeah, the guys sort of like the grown-up men who yeah. don't wear their Invisalign. So. <laughs> He's gonna keep hammering me. Yeah, yeah, well, I got yeah but I got busted on uh, on my headgear. Yeah, we gotta. Do, you, so. do they still? The kids still do all the headgear stuff now. I mean, that's still a part of it. Yeah, it is actually. Uh, yeah. It depends. You know, it's that. interesting that here in the South. Uh, we'll still use headgear, whereas if you go to California, I mean, it's unheard of. Why? What's the difference? Well, I, you know, people will ask me when I'm lecturing, you know, how do you get kids to wear stuff like that in the South? And I say, well, in the South, the culture still uh, a lot, yes, sir, no, sir. Obedient. Yeah, do what yeah. you're told. Right. Uh, now, it's a little softer than that. When I grew up, you, were, you did as you were told. And sure. you didn't question. Yeah. Unless uh, you were me, apparently. Uh, unless I, you're Beth yeah. Bethany over here. Yeah, well, I might be in a different generation, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, no, I think it's uh, uh, very culturally. You know, I have visitors from, you know, like, uh, two weeks ago I had a guy from Britain and the next week a guy from Egypt. You know, and all these different cultures who are observing how I practice and have to adapt that to so Egypt, you're, you're saying California, they're, it's so about appearance and aesthetics, and it's pretty superficial. Well, no, yeah, they, well, they just want to know where they're going to wear it. Yeah, right. I'm I not mean, going to let my kid be seen. He's got a Versace. Uh, she's got a Versace purse. She can't wear headgear. Yeah. Well, but I mean, so I know I'm in trouble in a consultation if I say I want your child to wear a headgear, and the mother turns and goes, "Well, sweetie, do you think you can do that?" <laughs> Uh, yeah, then you're going. Ah, I tell you what, maybe the headgear isn't going to be what we need. You know, let's go hey, to plan B. House, it was like we paid three thousand yeah. dollars <laughs> put the thing on or no food or whatever well but you know part of it again is the parental involvement too uh you know i'll have a mother that'll say you know how uh, do they really have to wear the headgear you know and i go uh and we don't use it as much as you said a lot of other things out there by the way right but uh and i say well look that's my a game okay so if you want me to try and make an a you know <laughs> you got to be on the a track I, yeah let's let's get on the a game and, you know, if they come in and say, well, the kid, you know, just came in tonight and said, she's not going to wear the headgear. And I said, well, she can't, what, what if she just comes in and says, you know, mom, I'm going to make C's in school. Be what average. are you going to do with that? And yeah, you're going to have at it. <laughs> and I said, so we're trying to make an A in orthodontics here, you know. You'll, I think you'll enjoy this story. I'm just reminded of this. We, one of my kids was at a, uh, one of these youth, I think it was a scout camp. It was one of these overnight camps, right. one of the camps, right? And didn't bring his toothbrush, well, I'm sure. Well, we had, we had, he had a retainer. And, and it was about that age when they all had braces and retainers. And so we're in this giant mess hall, right? <laughs> and the kids, you know how you take your tray and dump it in the trash and you put your tray yeah. in the window. And it was dinner and we were all doing the tray thing. And I remember one of the dads going, oh, my gosh, my retainer's missing. He's digging around in the trash. The kids, re His kid's retainer was missing. Yeah. Me having a kid with a retainer, I felt sympathy for him. So, well, let me help this guy out. Yeah. So we start digging around in the trash. And he and and one popped out and he picked it up and he goes there it is and the little boy was like no that's not mine <laughs> I am not in one trash can we found three retainers in, in one night this was telling how do those things just go missing all the time Oh yeah but here's just, a little hint you know is uh, ask for the uh, here's a little bit of technology for you all right ask for the glow in the dark retainer 
there is a glow in the dark retainer. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. That's easier to find. Yeah, you just cut the lights off and yeah, it's light that's down when the floor it always and it'll goes. show up. Yeah. How does it get, get one with a remote beeper? You know, just push the button and it bings or something. Yeah, that's right. That, so that you could, be... With a GPS on it yeah, or something like that. I need a golf ball like that, actually. <laughs> yeah. Or we could just call the NSA. They'll know where it is. They know everything. <laughs> um, it, and I suppose over the years, um, are, are kids different to work with? You talk about the cultural stuff and families or kids the same over the 30 years anyway they just they don't want to do this and you just have to work with them and if they've changed a lot it's been so incremental i can't say that they have you've changed with them i guess uh, yeah if okay. they've changed i, I really you kids know are kids uh yeah kids are kids and, and at the age guy get them you know there are clear clearly psychologically even though they might not appear on the surface that way they want to please adults sure and so especially in the south yeah, especially in the South. And so uh, if you just play that gig as, as much as you can, you know, express disappointment, you know, mm -hmm. don't chew them out mm -hmm. or say, you know, I know your parents are ashamed of you. No, that's stupid. <laughs> okay. But, um, you know, just how there are lots of ways to express disappointment. How, why? You got to answer. This is an eternal question. I thought I would save this for the Lord if I made it to heaven, but I think I'll just ask you when uh, you're getting there, you're at the dentist or the orthodontist and they're working on you. Why do people talk to you while you get, while they got tools in your mouth? I can't answer questions. Well, that's because uh, I always you, get you all can't these talk questions. back. So. Yeah, okay, all right, okay. Got <laughs> Easy enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how's it going? Uh, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you ever get that? <laughs> so, what do you think about Obamacare? Well, first of all, <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I got another piece for you. Is the uh, BBC uh, has does sections on talking animals? Yeah. And it has a chimp looking at a chimp's mouth. <laughs> yeah, they do a dental thing on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hilarious. Oh, he's, he's, he's down there doing this. He asks him a question, the, the guy goes, uh, and he goes, sir, please don't talk while I've got my fingers in your mouth. You know? Uh, that's <laughs> look, I enjoy, I, look, I enjoy, always enjoy talking to business people, especially somebody that's been successful at it and has accomplished all that you have. But 30 years, any other final thoughts for other folks that are out there just trying to do, basically this is about customer service, not just orthodontics, but taking care of people and being good to your employees and what well, and, and, and I think that's why most healthcare professionals become healthcare professionals. It's a calling. It's, yeah, yeah. You care about people, and my biggest disappointments are when things aren't going well, or uh, there's disappointment, a feeling of disappointment towards me that maybe I haven't given it my all, and and so you know we, I, I would think I would speak for ninety five percent of physicians and dentists and everybody that uh, we really do care about the health of our patient. Uh, it's not about me that I want to make you happy so you can refer me to more patients. Well, of course, that's the business side. Sure. But people can read a fake. Absolutely. Yeah, there's no getting around that. And, and to build customer law, I bet you've seen generations come back. Uh, oh, yeah. You work I mean, on the parents. The, that's and the beauty of it is I'm treating the second generation so of patients. Treat your customers right, and you get that, you get that yeah. kind of thing going. Yeah, and they're always better patients uh, than they remember. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, actually, they usually go, I was your worst patient. Weren't, weren't, weren't and I? you can remember them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, look, uh, Bethany, let me make some quick announcements, make sure I got this covered up, too. Our, our friends at First Partners Bank bring you this segment. And y'all got another one of your uh, sort of reach out to businesses. This one's in Irondale. You want to tell us about it real quick? Yes. We're doing a social media 101 workshop, and that one will be October 29th at 1130. And basically, we'll be covering the basics for social media for business. So, uh, so Facebook, uh, Twitter, Pinterest. Pinterest. See, that's the one I still don't know about. Yes. Maybe I need to show up. I'm strongly addicted myself. Irondale on the 29th. Yes. And it's a lunch thing for it's businesses lunch, in Irondale. It's lunch, and we're providing lunch. So, call in. Make okay. reservations with Michelle at 205-951-1415. 205-951-1415. We really appreciate First Partners trying to help educate, connect small businesses to let people get a conversation going. Thank you very much. Back here in a minute. My name is Elam Holly, and I am CEO of First Partners Bank, member FDIC. While some might think it's unusual for a bank to step outside the box and provide resources for business owners, we believe that being a great bank is just the beginning. We want to be your banking partner in life and in business for now and the journey ahead because your story is our story our success is tied to yours we call it partnership banking and it's the core of our mission in fact at first partners bank we have developed an entire program of resources 
designed to help small business owners grow and succeed. They include the Tools for Success blog, the Small Business Workshop series, Tools for Success magazine, and of course, the Tools for Success radio program. Each of our Tools for Success initiatives are free and available to every business owner in the community, whether or not they're a customer of First Partners Bank. We've even set up a special website just for Tools for Success at usucceed-wesucceed.com, where you can learn more about all the resources available for business owners. While you're there, you can subscribe to the blog, check the schedule for our next workshop learning event, browse through the virtual copy of the latest issue of the magazine, or listen to a podcast of the radio program. We are bankers, but first and foremost, we are partners. Partners with our customers, partners with our community. Our philosophy, our mission, our purpose is simple. When you succeed, we succeed. Call us today at 205-822-5500 and let us show you what partnership banking is all about.